drugs, prostitutes, $300 stakes. Today in the Bruce Lehrman defamation trial, a witness will be cross-examined on the most eye-popping allegations that have surfaced so far. And for this very colourful trial, that's really saying something. It's Taylor Auerbach, a former TV producer who has entered stage left just before curtains. Today was supposed to be the day Justice Michael Lee delivered his federal court decision on Lehrman's claim he was defamed by untrue accusations published by Network 10 and its presenter, Lisa Wilkinson. Instead, the judge will have to sit on his decision for a few more days and listen to the evidence of Auerbach, whom 10 has called as a witness in its attempt to discredit Bruce Lehrman. We'll get to the alleged drugs and prostitutes in a moment. First, let me set the scene. What this fracas has revealed is a wild behind-the-scenes battle that's been going on for nine months between two rival TV networks, 10 and 7. 10, of course, was the outlet that published Brittany Higgins' emotional interview in 2021, in which she claimed she'd been raped inside Parliament House back in 2019. Tonight, claims of rape, roadblocks to a police investigation and a young woman forced to choose between her career and the pursuit of justice. In June 2023, Seven published an episode of its current affairs show Spotlight, in which Bruce Lehrman had his say. You ready? Let's light some fires. Did you rape Brittany Higgins? No, I didn't. It simply didn't happen. As soon as Seven published the Spotlight story, Ten swept in with a series of complaints to the network directly, to the broadcast watchdog ACMA, and even to police. Ten's allegation was that Seven had unfairly misrepresented its journalism by selectively editing the five-hour pre-interview between Higgins and presenter Lisa Wilkinson, along with producer Angus Llewellyn. Documents tendered to the federal court show lawyers for 10 accusing Seven of deliberately seeking to impugn the professionalism of Wilkinson and Llewellyn by including instances where they were drinking alcohol and eating takeaway during that conversation. One for each hand. That's your gin and tonic. <laughs> now, um, nachos? Yeah. Those front rolls are actually pretty good. Mm. Are they? Yeah and airing their own opinions about what Higgins had allegedly been through. It's about fear, it's about intimidation, it's sexist, everything is implied, everything's in secret. Ten asked Seven, under a subpoena issued by Justice Lee, to produce all its communications with Bruce Lehrman, including any documents he'd provided. Seven handed over the raw footage from its interview with Lehrman, but said it had nothing else to provide. Ten's lawyers asked the Australian Federal Police to get involved because it said the material aired in the Spotlight show had come from police documents that were handed over during the criminal trial of Bruce Lehrman. Remember, that's the trial where Lehrman pleaded not guilty, but no verdict was ever returned. The trial was aborted after a juror was caught reading unauthorised material and the charges were later dropped. Ten asked the Australian Federal Police if a crime had been committed in the way Spotlight obtained its material. That is, if Bruce Lehrman or another party to the trial had handed over the material. If that were the case, Ten alleges it'd be a breach of a principle called the Harmon Undertaking, which means you can't use material obtained in a court case for any other purpose. The cops didn't bite saying this in a letter signed by Andrew Bailey, Commander of Investigations. At this stage, there is no clear underlying criminal conduct which would give rise for a basis for the AFP to investigate the circumstance of the alleged contempt. Separately, the AFP has referred the disclosure of the above information to the National Anti-Corruption Commission, who are leading an ongoing investigation regarding whether any AFP members may have been involved in this conduct. Eventually, however, Ten got the crucial puzzle piece it needed in order to bring this matter back in front of the court. That puzzle piece is Taylor Auerbach, the former Spotlight producer who came to prominence in recent weeks, featuring in news stories about the way Spotlight had handled its interactions with Lehrman. 
The most spectacular of those stories was an allegation a seven credit card was used to pay Thai masseuses, something Bruce Lehrman immediately denied any involvement with. And now the material is before the court, because after Auerbach hit the headlines last week, he provided three affidavits to ten, via his lawyer, Rebecca Giles. Incidentally, Auerbach says in his affidavit he initially approached Sue Chrysanthu SC, but like almost every other specialist defamation silk in Australia, she's already involved in this trial, representing Lisa Wilkinson. She referred Auerbach to Giles, a solicitor. Ten immediately asked Justice Lee for an urgent hearing so it could get this material into the trial before his imminent judgment, which was due to be handed down today. Auerbach claims Lehrman did hand over significant amounts of material to Seven, including copies of Brittany Higgins' text messages and other documents apparently from the trial. He described helping Lehrman enter the Seven offices in Sydney to photocopy documents from a ring binder. Auerbach explained in his affidavit that when a story was published last week about the Thai masseuses, he read a statement from Bruce Lehrman denying any involvement and describing Auerbach as a disgruntled ex-producer. Auerbach says in his affidavit this. We've used a voice actor. I knew that Mr Lerman's claims were false, as were the statements made by Seven that I was disciplined as a result of misuse of the company credit card. Auerbach says he lost his current job as a producer at Sky News Australia as a result, and that prompted him to seek advice about suing Lerman for defamation and a contractual dispute with Seven. He says he'd previously left Seven in 2023, Whereupon, I made a claim against Seven for psychological injury, in which I settled on confidential terms. Auerbach says his new solicitors asked him to search his records for documentation in relation to Lehrman, and he found several documents he obtained while working with Lehrman in preparation for the Spotlight interview. The AFP Statement of Facts. This was from a of text between Brittany Higgins and Ben Dillow. All the applicant emailed me a detailed chronology, including links to the primary material. Auerbach says he's also located receipts of purchases he and or Seven paid for Lehrman, whom he refers to as the applicant. Multiple dinners worth four or $500, a round of golf in Tasmania, flights, a rental in Sydney, a request from Lehrman for accommodation with a jacuzzi, and... Receipt for Sensei Thai Massage on 26th of November 2022, with the applicant and John McGowan approximately $10,315, and a taxi for the applicant from Franca to Meriton, Sydney, for an after-dinner meeting on the 5th of January, 2023. I recall that money is paid by the applicant for illicit drugs and prostitutes that evening at the Meriton, and the following evening at a brothel in Surrey Hills, were reimbursed to the applicant by Seven through per diems via invoice. I no longer have a copy of this invoice. Auerbach claims that later, when concerns arose that Network 10 was asking questions about the sourcing of its story, Spotlight executive producer Mark Llewellyn and a lawyer working with Seven both told him to delete all his communications with Lehrman. I followed this direction and permanently deleted anything that I could find on my computer and phone. Ellie Dudley is The Australian's legal affairs correspondent and I caught up with her to ask what she's expecting in the federal court tower looming above Sydney's Hyde Park. Total chaos? Is that the best way to describe it? I think it's going to be incredibly interesting seeing Taylor Albeck in the witness box. And I think that it's going to be quite heated between him and Bruce Lerman's counsel, Matthew Richardson SC. We've seen throughout this trial that Mr Richardson is quite a colourful barrister. He likes to crack jokes occasionally, much to the delight of Justice Michael Lee. So if Bruce Lerman's credibility is going to be destroyed, if this evidence is accepted then Matthew Richardson is going to have to do the exact same thing to Taylor Auerbach. He's going to have to tear him down. Taylor Auerbach claims Bruce Lehrman procured illicit drugs and was reimbursed by Seven. That's something Lehrman will likely deny. The issue there is that it's so easy for Network 7 to say, well, we just gave him a per DM, so what do you use that money for? Who knows? And that's not our problem. Network 7 has maintained that they never paid Bruce Lerman any money. And so now what do they say to that? Because now they've got a former employee who worked clearly very closely with Mr Lerman saying that he did receive money. So the entire thing 
is incredibly murky. And then on top of that, you've now got Taylor Auerbach, who clearly was very close with Mr Lerman at some point, completely throwing him under the bus and saying that he was the one who provided Spotlight with all these documents. You don't throw your sources under the bus. Coming up, what the documents allegedly reveal about Brittany Higgins' partner. Well, I've got you. If you're closely following events in Gaza and Israel and you'll be in Melbourne on April 11, we'd love you to join us for a special event free for subscribers to The Australian Plus. It'll be me in conversation with journos Yoni Bashan and Cameron Stewart. To register, go to theaustralianplus.com.au slash events. We'll be back after this break. If you've seen pictures of Brittany Higgins coming in and out of court or waiting at an airport, you'll recognise David Shiraz as her tall, dark-haired fiancé. He's a former TV producer, and he was the one who first reached out to Lisa Wilkinson, telling her about Higgins' allegations of rape. Shiraz has not given evidence in court, something Justice Lee has been curious about. We've used a voice actor. It appears from the communications between Mr Llewellyn and Mr Shiraz, who's like the prophet Elijah in this case, there's a place for him here at the Passover table, but he never turns up. Dr Matthew Collins KC argued there was no forensic advantage in calling Shiraz to give evidence. Basically, he couldn't tell the court anything it didn't already know. Sue Chrysanthu SC, representing Wilkinson, disagreed. She said there were plenty of missed opportunities where Higgins' partner could have shed some light. But now Shiraz's name is back in the court, and here's why. Taylor Auerbach, the former Seven producer, has included in one of his affidavits something he claims to have received from Bruce Lehrman, a chronology. That document's been tended to the court, and it's a lengthy run-through of events, starting with Lehrman's birth in December 1994. It's important to note this document hasn't yet been tested in court, and Lehrman's been given no opportunity to explain yet. But chronologies are something that often surface in court cases, where lawyers set out in a detailed timeline the sequence of events. This alleged chronology includes descriptions of events including the night of the alleged rape, which appear to be drawn from other documents, including police interviews and witness statements. But buried in there are a few interesting snippets we haven't yet seen in these proceedings before, including messages between Brittany Higgins and her partner David Shiraz. There's also something purporting to be a recorded conversation between Higgins and a man then at the apex of power, then Prime Minister Scott Morrison's Chief of Staff, John Kunkel. Back in March 2021, Higgins complained to Kunkel about what she said were members of Scott Morrison's staff spreading nasty rumours to journalists about Shiraz. Kunkel said he'd investigate, and later the government said it hadn't found any evidence to back up Higgins' claims. The chronology then reports an alleged message from Higgins to Shiraz, saying, Fuck it. If they want to play hardball, I'll cry on the project again because of this sort of mistreatment. I do not care. In his text to Higgins, according to the chronology, Shiraz habitually refers to Scott Morrison using the C word. After the government said it had no evidence of rumour spreading, according to the chronology, Shiraz texted Higgins. I'm really upset and angry. They literally use this process to air the allegations. I want to kill them. It was always a risk. That was their retribution for giving it to Labor ahead of estimates and having them named. It's entirely understandable that you're upset and angry, though. This whole thing has been extremely unfair and it's just hard to get your head around it. Subscribe at theaustralian.com.au today for live updates from the courtroom and all our expert analysis. Plus, you can come back to the front tomorrow for more. And don't forget our Israel-Gaza special event in Melbourne on August 11 with me, Yoni Bashan and Cameron Stewart. To register, go to theaustralianplus.com.au slash events.